Hello, so I am back. Results I hope both of us are back. Yesterday I covered a part of that bending elements from uh, one of the posters on the net with a permission saying uh, yes uh, you can use all this information. Now, I will continue with this from another uh, place which also in the same this thing I suggest as we go along you look at the original in case I have skipped something. So, you see here it is a manufacturing process by which metal can be deformed by plastically deforming the material and changing its shape. Material is stretched to beyond its yield strength all this I spoke to you yesterday saying we have a yield stress and then afterwards there will be a permanent set that can occur. So, if you take the normal stress strain diagram you see there is a small kink in it and then after the plastic deformation is done eventually before it tears fully below its ultimate tensile strength you can continue to make operations and you can improve life or improve the process by intermediate stages of annealing and let the grain grow back while that is a specialty by itself as part of the material thing it it has a bearing on this of course, I cannot say you cannot uh, you do not need it here, but we can concentrate on what we need to do here. So, so far the bending elements which we have talked about are about taking the internal dimensions and adding something to it as a bend elements this is what we have been doing all along. Another way of doing it is saying in some cases we probably have only the external dimensions which are measurable alternatively only the external dimensions are of interest to us. So, please have a look at the sample which I would like to show you here this is what I was talking to you about this being a hat section this particular thing actually is from a, a box which holds a switch gear switch gear meaning all those uh, various types of things which use the DIN C clamp mounting. So, if you see here we are not that much really interested in the internal dimensions as we are interested in the total height and then we are interested in the various features what is the depth here and so on. So, in such cases we invariably end up with having to find out the total dimensions outside and eventually subtract the extra material that may come about. I will get back again I will give you a special lecture on this in this case you can see this is a small aluminum uh, sample which uh, I have used earlier to make sure that uh, what I am talking has a practical and same thing. And now this lecture today is going to talk to you about imagine there are two sections in which part of it is like this and then we have a corner how does one cover the corners. So, as I go along I will also show you a small method actually if you remember I started this in the first lecture saying you learn how to make a cardboard simulation. This is not a actually a real um, product, but then I just wanted to show you that in a very short time it is very much possible for us to simulate items like this without too much of bother of having to fabricate a piece and then uh, what do you call end up with uh, not being able to modify it. It is not as serious as this, this one is my hearing aid box. In the case of this hearing aid box tremendous amount of detail has been worked inside such that it can be opened well, but even then if you start with these things, things like where do you split the box followed no, where you split the box 
and then uh, how do the top and bottom join together and then if you have a class pair how does it work and so on. As I pointed to you earlier a lot of it depends on how well what is the amount of money you are ready to spend in uh, making the detailing perfect. It is a simple throwaway item obviously you do not add too much to it, but if it is a cosmetic item or in my case it is a very very highly functional item which I need to carry all these things a tremendous amount of interest and uh, detailing time is spent so that things look ok. So, if you are to come to cosmetics including powder compacts, rouge and then all your uh, various types of sprays and uh, what you will find in a shower lot of the shower gels and all that a lot of effort goes into making the detailing on the top. Now, getting back to my exercise I mean the actual lecture here you will notice that same thing the k factor seems to be uniform is a ratio that represents location of the neutral sheet with respect to the thickness of the sheet metal part. So, uh, using the radian calculations and so on they have come out with lot of these things which I tried to tell you about yesterday. Then there is this uh, issue of a setback and bending elements and so on extremely well and straightforward providing provided we know the correct k factor to use once again most accurate way of finding the k factor is by using reverse engineering method described and calculating the k factor used as described later. They talk about the reverse engineering it means make a sample bend it and get back because it is a physical phenomena the equation does not follow the I mean the equation does not cause the phenomena it only describes the phenomena and then how we can use it as we go down you see here one more time I, I may have repeated even here now it comes from a, probably either uh, it is called I think bend works I do not know which uh, program uses it, but you see the caution everywhere it is important to bend the sample piece in the same manner as you plan to bend your real pieces. So, that whenever you measure now becomes reproducible later seen that no total flat length versus what you get here the bend radius can be extremely difficult to measure accurately in the case of a not critical application we are interested in a number to use in our CAD program that with the bend radius used in our program will produce results you are measuring in real, real life. So, if you go down further a lot of these things are explained below. So, as I have told you about it now saying what exactly is air bending in air bending there is no need to change any equipment or dies to obtain different bending angles what is done is you see this top and bottom you have two dies and then you see the radius here and then as it moves inside and comes back you end up with soft material medium and hard material what is the k factor. So, as you make the punch move down a little you can get more or less of the included angle and then something else also is because of this air bending natural flow of the material and uh, especially if you use an hydraulic thing and slowly it seems to give you consistent better results. The other option is to call bottoming, bottoming is a bending process where the punch and work piece bottom on the die this makes for a controlled angle with very little spring back. The tonnage of this type of press is more than air bending the inner radius of the workspace should be a minimum of one material thickness. Earlier I told you that it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and then 3 times and so on in this case now they have given. So, you see here if you carefully see here this punch is you know holding it hard and making it bend 
it's in this no you have a die and a punch and then it is pushing all the materials inside you see here there is still a small bit of a gap here now going down you really have a bending process in which the punch and the work piece bottom on the die and compressive stress is applied to the bending region to increase the amount of plastic deformation. So, you see here a small detail this detail actually we need not uh, I mean a typical what you call equipment constructor need not break his head too much about it except to know that a fabricator goes through all these things and then when you make a design better to consult with them first. So, you see here if you see the exact corner here you see here there is a small relief also given here then there is another uh, some device here which pushes the thing here. So, you see that various types of these operations are given here bend radius should if possible to be kept at the same for all radius is in the part to minimize setup ideal minimum radius should be at least one bending perpendicular to the rolling direction is easier than bending parallel to the rolling direction. In rolling we mean the material which comes out of the what you call rolling presses in the case of a rolling press you have a continuous strip. So, if the strip is is available in this direction it means you can bend it here like this it comes continuously and then bending it here is like that if you try to bend it in the other direction chances are it will crack. Now, you see here hot rolled shield can be bent parallel to the rolling but in the for cold roll sheet we have a little problem about this thing. Minimum flange weight should be at least 4 times the stock thickness plus the bending violating the rule should cause distortions in the part or tooling or operator due to slippage. Once again relatively important point. So, we have here you have seen this if you try to hold this and do chances are it will pull inside you understood no if you take the corner and trying to do something chances are this edge will get pulled inside especially if the object is wrong. So, to overcome that they have means generally what they do is make something longer and then shear off the unwanted portion you can even have it one thickness. So, they will put another one thickness sheet here and remaining they will shear off. So, you have it, but the original operation is now repeated by 3 more operations after the original operation you have to take it out measure probably or check with the gauge and then pass it through another notching stage after notching again no may be you have to do dressing and all that you end up with multiple handling of the equipment if you violate this here. So, flange width it is just a matter of convenience they have given here saying thickness and bend radius and so on. Slots or holes too close to the bend can cause distortion holes should be located minimum these are all matters of uh, simple design guide rules. Dimensioning the part should take into account the stack up of dimensions that can happen and mounting holes can be made oblong should, should be made and then part should be inspected and uh, you know in the constraint portion and so on. The issue being I think while he was marking it there uh, you were uh, while the marking was going on there you were told that cumulative dimensions are used like this you have seen this no. So, something has been made and then after that starting from a datum line things are added and then wherever we have this bending a bending elements has been added and all the marking has been done with respect to a datum line there are certain advantages to this except when it is symmetrical and depending on accumulation of errors. If you see my colleague there he did it in a slightly convenient way he had marked something from this side turned it over ok and again marked something from the other side. So, that the symmetry is maintained in our case no if something becomes little more or less does not really 
make such a lot of a difference. And then you can see a small bit of detail here in the corner which I will come back to later. You see here there is a small step and all that I will come back to you later about it. Now coming back to my this notes in V bending the clearance between punch and die is constant equal to the thickness of the sheet blank. It is used widely sheet ranges from 0.5 mm to 25 mm tough really really tough and then you see here things like that hat section which I showed you U die bending is performed when two parallel bending axes are produced in the same operation a backing pad is used to force the sheet contacting the with punch it requires 30 percent the bending force for the pad to press and so on and so on and so on. Why this is done is if you are to have a cumulative bending and then there may not be it may not be possible for us to put something else here and then clamp it here once the U is formed clamping the U again it is a little problem there is no way of continuing the other bending. So, bends are close together typically this operation is done and sometimes even in the case of the hat section even the other operation can be done here if you put the other material easily you will be able to make such things here. Ah, then you see here slowly we are getting into a few specialty type of bending saying why do we need to just uh, follow those things. The blank holder and pad are there flange length can be changed and the bend angle can be controlled by the stroke position of the punch there is a little specialty items, but then uh, maybe it is just worth knowing if you go down we are stuff with you have seen this no various types of other operations double die bending can be seen as two wiping operations acting on the work piece one after the other. So, we have something here which first makes a contact and does afterwards one more and it does something then we have all these beautiful rotary bendings looks good and then a big list of references here I suggest you look up these things. Now, I will show you few other things from my nice collection of samples here ok. Yesterday I wanted to show a sample for you of this item see here if you remember I was holding that uh, small box. So, try to make a what do you call a, a design like this and in this design oh which way am I bending oh I think I should bend this side. We have several nominal dimensions which covers the top here then the bottom here and so on here and then somehow I need to make sure that the top and bottom fits here from the CAD convenience we have ignored the material thickness, but we cannot get away with it in reality. But when we make a cardboard box I will just show you the thing this was given to our uh, same professional who does all these things you see here after developing the sheet <laughs> this is the development drawing this is the development drawing as he has done he has happily removed all the materials we want very very carefully on two counts why it is being shown is that you will understand what it is secondly it is a little like the magic sculptor somebody asked a sculptor it seems saying how do you make all those beautiful art pieces he says oh nothing I look at the rock and remove all the unwanted pieces and then it remains what remains is the wanted piece it tough tough for us to do but then if you look at my what you call like monitor you will be able to see things that uh, have been done. So, after the sheet has been cut out from there very carefully a lot of interest you know has been taken to ensure that cuts are taken perfectly and then this this one is the bottom portion this is the top portion no allowances of any sort has been given 
we just make sure that things fit. See that what the picture earlier shows you in one direction slightly better here and now you see ah, miraculously these things seem to join with each other without any problem you have seen here. I will try to focus in the corner you have noticed actually there is a little pile up though we started with no thickness we seem to end up with a small you know something which is trying to push into the other corner which happens here also. Though the thickness is very small in this case that sheet thickness is probably around uh, point, uh, 6 or 0 0.7 mm cardboard still we still see the problem little closer view it is actually a small object and then to make it hold shape uh, another of my colleagues uh, is trying to hold them together and then he has applied this fevicol. Fevicol is uh, nothing it is a trade name for any of these uh, modern uh, cardboard glue which we would have used in school and then after that see the top and bottom have been attached together you see here so far the bottom is made and then the top top was only a, a preform you seen that no that is just a preform after sticking all these parts together at the bottom you have just attached it to the top and then you see we have a beautiful nice compact box. This is what I was talking to in my first lecture you remember my first lecture I told you you should learn to make all these small items two things are here in this one of them is in the earlier extension we just you know took a standard existing some unit we had and then I said a multimeter is probably something which is good ok and then uh, this one is imaginary but more for the purposes of showing you how sheet metal is affected by these things. So, you can see I have a as now as I go along I wanted to show you a very very interesting thing. See if I have to make a sheet metal cup it is possible for me understood the internal radiuses have been taken care of external radius also has been taken care of, but the only thing point in reality it is unlikely that you will have shop corners if you want to make a cup like this which is quite a lot like the cup I have here seen here this is another of my boxes it has radii all the directions hmm? that one is a little similar to this cup. There is an internal radius and then thickness has been added to the internal radius thickness has been added and the corners also externally they have these corners it looks nice and then one small bit of detail which is not visible is that small thickness no half the thickness has been removed here and in this top there is a small what you call catch here and the whole thing snaps and I have a smooth enclosure which goes neatly into my pocket I carry my hearing aids. So, coming back to my monitor what is shown here this sort of thing can be done only using a technique called deep drawing the case of deep drawing we have a cavity outside cavity which forms this and then we have this inside cavity that inside cavity and outside cavity form an object like this, but in real life we will notice that this cannot be done by a simple sheet metal operation. When we do sheet metal we end up with this small issue about how to join the corners you see here we have a thickness here we have a thickness there and something happens and the whole thing because two thicknesses are involved. Uh, something overlaps there it is not as easy as we think it is corner is still tough you want to completely avoid the corner we end up with giving a radius fully here you have seen that there is a radius radius and complete the radius has been relieved but 
these are not suitable for external operation. So, how do we overcome this small problem of this corners and this no we need to work a lot more about it to see where we come with these things. I do not know if you remember this is quite a little like the box I was trying to show you yesterday very conveniently I glossed over this corner ok just glossed over it because too early if, if we confuse ourselves with uh, all these details now you will suddenly notice while in a CAD drawing it is easy to make these uh, 3D rendered objects in reality what you will end up is most likely this corner is most likely to look like this seen that no it is not a matter of just ugly it is not fully functional not at all functional. So, you need to spend a lot of time worrying about this detail. So, right now I will go back to a few of my samples if uh, our people can show me these things. While this enclosure all has rounded things this one now seems to be a little more flat flatter things this can with a little bit of uh, what you say interest is very much possible to uh, for us to fabricate a, a small unit like this. This is the unit which is what was being shown. So, while things look ok when we try to show them in the workshop in reality the corners and all do not match well and there is a, a gap here actually it it is oscillating in fact it is not even touching it properly two of the limbs have been they have been able to manage it, but in this limb because of the closure in the end and so on it is not possible to close these things. So, if you really want a perfect square in the corner if you want to make a perfect edge our choice is probably to continue with welding. This is one of those uh, which I have shown you earlier a shielded arc uh, welding in which you know either argon or uh, some other gas has been used and then a fillet it have been put inside and then outside it looks flush. Similarly, on the other thing if you were to you know weld it on the outside inside will probably be flush. So, you can play around a little with these things it looks a little like that gusset which I have shown you in the other days lecture and it is not as if rounded edges are only the answer to all our problems. So, in real life you see here I showed you two things both of them use a that same 18 650 cell inside round some benefits it makes you know it, it looks a little like uh, some other object in this case see that extra volume actually volume appears to be about the same same cell is in this and then uh, we have something which uh, gives us slightly more work this can be also done by sheet metal this can probably done by taking a tube like the mu high H PVC or mu PVC tubes and then uh, building up all our things inside same things can be done probably if you have an aluminum extrusion you can make it in this case it is made out of some thermoplastic so that injection molding can be done but if uh, if there were to be heat uh, generating components we'll probably be using an aluminum extrusion or we can even assemble it using this ordinary whatever uh, workshop items you have just like i have shown you the section where we have two things being close together with a small step 
Hmm. You will see this in most of these things you see here we have, we have a top and then we have a bottom and then if you remember I was talking to something about if you cannot hide something highlight it. Next time look around all the injection molded parts you have they do not really close because the human eye can easily locate relative differences. So, intentionally they leave a gap they make a step and all that overall that part looks quite precise absolutely no problem with it. Having shown a few of the samples now permit me to go back this is the whole thing. So, in reality this is not easy to produce you have seen this no well it looks nice it is not that easy to produce or uh, anything. Same box which I showed you here this is did, did not have a thickness this is what has been done in the cardboard thing. But then as you come here slowly we have added the thicknesses here the moment you add the thickness we end up with two issues which I thought no I will highlight one more time here. One is you have seen here there is a bending radius inside it is real similarly there is a bending radius here real and then the moment you have an internal bending radius chances are there will be an outside radius also which will be part of it as seen this here if I go a little closer while the inside bending radius is clear here outside also sheet thickness internal bending plus sheet thickness will come and do you need the internal bending radius yes otherwise the sheet is likely to tear apart this is the reality of sheet metal. Well again very conveniently and to avoid confusion I have ignored uh, several things one of the features you will notice is while there is an internal bending radius this bending radius is supposed to sit here in this corner seen here. So, there will be a clash this will not fit here unless this is smoothened out on the outside. So, in the corner here a little bit of smoothening is required and same thing happens here also if you are to come to the bottom here it is not honky dowry. See that I have shown a sharp corner, sharp corner here and then conveniently it has been stopped here that is not likely to easily fit into this corner you need a little rounding of here or you need some other operations there. So, what looks otherwise as a simple uh, this thing no it really does not close so well it will be a lot like the other sample which I have shown you have seen this this is more like what is likely to happen. So, you need to take a decision about which part overlaps what in this case there is a bend here internal plus external radius is taken there is another bend here internal plus external has been taken care here. If you want to avoid you can you need to probably leave both the thicknesses visible here and with an another internal radius also which is the sample which I have shown. But in reality what they do is they make this overlap a little and then make some special uh, what do you call care is taken to make this follow into the other thing when it bends it normally it becomes a square it will just be a square after that after the bending is over they have either gently you know pinned it or they have uh, filed it to fit the other operation this is sheet metal reality and but then why do you need to learn you see here it started here you see here it is sharp and then but in the corner we have a radius here we have a radius here and then there is a unspecified thing if you are to make it flow here you need to do the other adjustments which have been done. So, probably this lecture has been uh, hopefully you know enough informative As seen here it is not you do not want any clash you end up with a completely open thing. So, this is going this is one of the what do you call I uh, will uh, see whether I can continue or I will stop here. Now, going back here you see here everywhere whenever there is a corner and whenever this type of operations are done sometimes these are all done to accommodate 
other limbs also. Imagine if one of these ends were to be closed. So, in the blank there would have been a limb which is a little longer ok and then just as you have a punch and a two sided operation is there, we can have it on all the four sides. So, you have a cup like thing the punch forces inside and then when it comes out you have a beautifully formed part. So, we have two angles flat imagine the whole thing is flat ok. So, you have all the four type of these operations are there you make a punch push it inside and all four of them close very well only in nature and in organic they grow into that, but in this case we still end up with probably small corners like this or you have to do something to take care of all these edges which are there. I suggest you go over the whole uh, this thing one more time and then it is not as if plastic things are easy. If you make something out of injection molding this one is taken from a some mobile charger which uh, was probably put to a bad use ok and then it burnt out. But you see here even here now they have all this nice uh, corners everywhere and in this corner we need to give slots. So, that air passes it did not help just uh, drilling holes all over the place did not help just have a look and uh, see and then after that I need not bring you back to this for some time. It is not as if last thing about bending elements has been done just as it is treated as a empirical operation without understanding what is going on inside. Here there are uh, people who keep working on these uh, what do you call uh, this uh, sheet metal flow operations especially you have something called metal forming definition and then later on some people have been working on it to find out what is the bending elements to be given and so on. Well, so far what I have sh shown you has been uh, uh, what do you call more about a uh, industrial practice the things like k factor and all have already people have been working on it and released notes are available in the public. So, if you see here this is not very different from what you have shown earlier while that is you know they claim a intellectual property on this this is in keeping with the tradition of our you know open access to various documents and all that a lot of this stuff is also available of the academic uh, what do you call uh, net. So, experiments have been carried out and then uh, gauges you know millimeter gauge and then type of material and then uh, the things have been reported. which are verifiable whole thing are reported and then there are several publications other than trade journals where it is possible for us to take care of all these things. Now, the issue being you see here CAD CAM programs can estimate the dimension of the sheet metal piece required to bend produce 3D object that the engineer is drawing. Life has been made simpler with analytics already having gone into the various types of operations. So, we have here how the is the k factor gets you know accommodated and so on. So, and then most important have you seen here saying coefficient of friction with stress has been observed for steels for slow velocities as the ones occurring and so on. So, the amount of different types of forces and then the reproducibility 
all of it is available in books. Still small compensation no saying for a smaller die width what happens for a longer die width what happens lot of this information is available. Since some of you are the electrical engineers you are all familiar with application notes. So, if you look at a anything a small thermistor or if you look at an LDO or anything there is usually the title sheet contains a little bit of the extracts bottom sheet gives you the full actual behavior and what is it that is committed. So, you see here lot of stuff about punch shape and uh, all this stuff now is available of the of publications. So, you can always go about and then try to do understand these things. So, that to see in case there is any mistake is it mistake of so far we are assuming that all the machines are maintained well there is no gap or shake or anything of those uh, things between the punch and die alignment and whether the forces are centralized or not. If you are sure about these conditions you can now work on all these things and then end up with a very convenient reproducible width of blanks. Once you have blanks reproducible width things will work very very well and then two things are there one is continuously you need to update all the tooling secondly the material condition should be checked. So, thank you for today and then uh, we will meet again with that next level of things. So, far I have talked to you about the highest abstraction level saying how do you try to you know concept uh, think of products and so on. Then second level I have tried to take you to the our fabrication facility here saying using sheet metal we can fabricate certain items and then for purposes of sheet metal I have told you it is very easy for us to make all these nice uh, models ok. It is cardboard, it is not necessary child's play and then if you want to accommodate thickness you can always make things out of a thicker board. And then finally, if the same thing can be reproduced in plastic materials typically the, uh, the if you are only concentrating on the shape commercial polystyrene sheets are available and then you also have foam boards then you have polycarbonate then you have acrylic then you have uh, I do not know what are the new types of materials and there are say various types of foams that are available if you are to make a mouse you can use an acrylic foam to model this you take it and then you try to scrape the foam. And the magic is now with the advent of rapid prototyping you can scan the object and reproduce it directly in a 3D printer. So, in 3D printer also next uh, lectures I will see whether I can arrange for a demonstration the easiest I suggest for you is that uh, learn how to make things out of sheet metal and then also plastics. So, most of these things the advantage main advantage of plastic is it is insulator you need not worry too much about uh, what you call how to make sure that you do not short circuit something. In the same way the disadvantage is they are not EMI and EMC proof. So, you need to worry about it sheet metal has the positive advantage of it is being very strong and then if you make it in uh, magnetic materials the shielding is better and if you make it in non-magnetic materials electrical conductivity is still ensured normal uh, conductive EMI and uh, those things you know behave much much better and then ultimately strong strong beyond belief as compared to plastic. And then sheet metal if you make it 
if you make the drawings and use all the various techniques, there are enough people out there who will convert it to CAD drawings. So, I will see if I can take you through a little bit of a CAD exercise. Similarly, if I can take you through a little bit of a plastic exercise saying how do I join plastics and so on in the end show you one or two materials or I am sorry projects which completely are fabricated for each type of thing. So, thank you for today we will probably meet again thank you.